need to order that at 703. That uh, we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aaron, if you would help us by reading. Our Pledge of Allegiance is the Okay, Ashley, if you would please call the roll. Um, Arad? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Griffin? Here. Hubbard? Here. Michelle's? Present. Keo? Yes. Here. Um, Gilbert? Right. Hazard? And then uh, Aaron? B? Present. Thank you. Uh, item C on the, on the agenda is approval of the meeting minutes from our city council work session on February 14th, as well as our regular city council meeting on February 14th. Motion to approve. I'll move to approve them. Motion to approve Motion by Griffin. Second by Cousins. Thank you both. Griffin, any changes? It's a desk change. I have not changed it. Okay. Mr. Cousins? No. Other council members? Okay, seeing that change is proposed. If you call, we'll to approve the meeting match. Rob? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Michelle? Yep. Cousins? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fisher? Yes. Keo? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Is Alex here? He is not here yet. Okay. Okay, I got his name fixed. Okay. And so I was going to work what I was supposed to do with it. I was supposed to do it. Extend it right back to where it was. It was clear and extend it down with the effect. Oh, not a good idea. You're actually clear. I'm going to have a little bit of 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 Approve the agenda. I have the agenda as presented. Moved by Fisher. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the agenda? We were not inclined to add anything from Saturday's work session, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm going to try and lead a little bit of a discussion on the properties on 345 Broad for my just for that. Let's cover them there. Okay. If you want to make a formal agenda, I don't have any problem with that either. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, please call the vote to approve the agenda. Fisher? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Arab? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Keo? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have down to item F, declaration of any conflicts of interest. Uh, Zach? Uh, under consent agenda, there's uh, paying bills to my employer for services that they've done, so I will not participate in the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Okay. We have no public hearings under item G. So item H is not arranged participation. See Marie is online. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak this evening? Not at this time. We have our upcoming meeting list in the packet on page 11. Comments on meetings? Okay. Our first report tonight is from our public services superintendent and or his assigned assistant. How are you guys tonight? Well, good. Good. Um, for you, as I was in the two week report, if there's any questions, you can go ahead and answer those. Okay. I just have a question about Dan Coley Road. It's pretty beat up. So I just don't know what I think last year it was like full patch, maybe, or just the potholes and all that. And so I don't know where how that fits into it. To me, that's the worst part of the road that I drive on. Is that on that side? You're talking about right there at the intersection? 
Yeah, 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 pretty close. Yeah, when you're, yeah. Yeah, obviously because the snow puts them back a little bit, right. but uh, it's something I'm going to go with them tomorrow to let them know. I'm, they try to get out there as often as they can, but with obviously everything else going on, sometimes it's a little harder. Yeah, so, I guess I didn't feel like anything immediate needed to be done. I understand roads can get in bad shape in the right. winter, especially. I guess I didn't know if there were longer term plans to. Major, more yeah, major yeah, yeah. So, 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 um, we, we do know that that's a, a bad area, and, and they do have to keep visiting that area. Um, and so it is one of the roads that we're looking at as, as part of our kind of what roads do we hit next plan. So, yeah, okay. it was out there, I think it was last year, I think it was like they did, they used to mill up alongside the filling bags. So, we did spend some time out there I mean, last year, a year and a half ago. Once it gets to that point, it's really hard. Yeah, I, I, I think he's been spending some time for pretty much every summer out on Dan Hoy. Yeah, a little bit. And it's really hard with the old fashioned stuff that you use for the water to get through it, and it's freezes and it pops. And it's difficult for any community to send you. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I missed what I was talking about a non arranged. Uh, last Monday morning, Neighbor's house in Willard. Uh, uh, he looked out and saw that the garbage cans were too close to the car. So he went out and moved the garbage cans. In doing that, he fell. And his knee uh, could not get up, move, didn't get his phone out of his back pocket. And uh, when he did that, uh, he just waited there. Until somebody came along, or somebody was a, uh, one of our um, waste management people, went and told his wife, came back and did that. So, you know, the guy stayed, stayed there quite a while. So, they all got done. I don't know if you did that, but I think we had to thank them over the letter. A lot of them trying to make contact with the city would be nice to send them a letter. He had to have. The knee cap came back up into the space above that, about an inch and a half. And then they had to remove that or get that move, get it back down, get it settled, and then put a get now our cash for six to eight weeks. And then just going out and try to move it. How long, it how long do you think he was out there for? He was out there at least 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Not nobody else was walking down the road and speed or side of buyer. Early morning, really. No, well, that was wasn't that really early. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, and then he, he called and um we're we're getting him the contact information for I think whoever it was, that'd be nice to do that at this point. Thank you, folks, for whatever you're saying. Twenty dollar bill, whatever you do that. <laughs> So. I have a question. I know it's not on on EONSDTE, but any idea or thought, have you heard anything about the um, fallen um, light pole in on in Dexter Crossing on Cambridge and Carrington? I actually seen that today, and it's something I want to talk to her about. I just get a chance to talk to him today, but I can definitely do that. So I know it's um, it's obviously got to order the pole, and everything pulls on most of the times. So. We deal with polls in the past, unless Dan's got something else. It's been reported. Yeah. Um, a lot of this stuff is outside of the city's control. Totally understand. I was just wondering if you had an update. I don't know what he would have talked to her. We'll see. Thank you. What was it that described it again? A light bulb. Oh, like a decorative light bulb? Light bulb. Okay. Yeah, and I know in the past, I've, right, I mean, myself, and other place I was working and ordering those could take up to eight to twelve weeks sometimes. Oh. And that was back then when things were readily available. So mm -hmm. now I don't know. So but that can definitely be thank you. That that's actually yeah. great to know because I can talk to people when they ask me questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What uh, what percentage of our salt have we used? Are we yeah. 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 Still ordering, or what's the? He's still ordering. I don't have a percentage of work that I've seen, but I don't write that down. Yeah, I just yeah, I, I, I know that we got an order um, probably about a month ago. 
We just got some more dropped off. Yeah, okay. I guess I thought it was more yeah. Yeah. No so, issues so far. Okay. Okay. Supply is fine. Okay, good. It just, it just needs to stop selling on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. Mo 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 Monday through Friday from 7 to 3.30 only. Should have done overtime by the time. Questions for Tim or Dan? Thank you very much. Thanks. I guess now is a question of time since we do have that water main break. Thing on the consent agenda. Is there anybody has a question on that? Our next uh, report is our community development manager, Michelle. House Council this evening. Excellent. Okay. Um, so before I go into any verbal updates, and I've got three of them basically, do you have any questions or comments for me? I just wanted a reminder, it's on page 20, a DBA update that was in the school. They have a restricted fund in the amount of $100,000 each year. Can you remind me what that's for? What are they setting aside money for? When the, when the one of the bonds, yes, um, Books, um, certain opportunities during the education process are not recallable. You need to change the terms. You can go to them and change the terms. You put aside $100,000 to make a direct principal payment in addition to the regular schedule at that time to try to pay down the principal. So it's, it's reserved money that the board felt. Uh, should be set aside separately for the purpose of trying to put a debt in that when the appropriate time comes. Thank you. I can't remember which bond is the target for it. Thank you. So my first update, um, and I apologize that I neglected to remember to tell you about this before. <clears throat> so many of you may know Oxford Communities has been actively trying to sell Dexter Crossing. Um, it is not a closed sale yet, but there is, there is apparently an agreement that's been <clears throat> submitted um, by a company out of Ohio that's looking at purchasing it. And uh, Marie and I actually met with them um, uh, approximately two weeks ago. Um, it wasn't a scheduled meeting. We sort of hunted them down. Um, we found out that they were in town. Uh, the chamber sent an email asking for our assistance in answering questions that they had. And um, in following up the day that I happened to get the questions and try to follow up with them, um, the gentleman's secretary said, well, he's actually out there in next turn right now. It's like, um, okay, we his phone number. And she said, he won't answer the phone. I said, well, I guess I'm taking a drive out. And so uh, we tracked him down at Chela's. They were having a very nice lunch. Um, but we were able to answer a lot of questions for them regarding um, permit processing, <coughs> property maintenance, um, uh, assessing questions, etc. Um, there, there, there have been a few follow-up emails after. Um, one of the things that I did provide them was an explanation and understanding of the incremental tax free process. I know that was something that um, Oxford did not know when they purchased and did become a real point of angst for them. Um, we have since been able to help them understand it all, but I figured it's better to provide information so they understand. I would say as a sort of active fact. So I think it just it just goes to show that the city is um, trying to be cooperative and, and provides information. So um, uh, hopefully we'll hear something, but they sounded like a very uh, diligent type of company. <clears throat> um, an update on the Sloan Kingsley property. I did reach out to the township planner in SIO. Um, he confirmed, yes, there are no owners. Yes, they were aware of that. 
and that the new owner's representative, Tom Covert, is actively seeking to schedule a meeting with the township planner and the supervisor. Um, and that was the that was what I heard at the end of last week. <laughs> so there isn't anything more now, but it does look like they're looking to um, re-engage the township. Um, Mr. Covert did contact uh, did contact me. We talked about um, the uh, previous infrastructure improvement research that was done um, when Mr. Heisler owned the property and was looking for a potential annexation. Um, it, uh, the numbers are still fairly solid in that plan, so it's a good benchmark. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see if it's something that they wish to pursue. I presume if they're willing to pay, it becomes an easier conversation, but um, until then, there's, there's, it's just speculation. Um, um, the, uh, I did not bring their names. Um, David Lupton? He's the former um, Reinhardt Realtor owner of that particular business, and I didn't recognize the name of the other channel. Um, as it pertains to the zoning ordinance update, Planning Commission has received the draft document from the committee, and they're working their way through. We're not doing the page by page. Um, Carla Wortman has done a really good job explaining which areas have been updated and sort of summarizing um, when things have been moved and relocated versus things that have actually changed. <clears throat> we do not have a meeting in the scope of services for another joint planning commission city council meeting. But this is a this is a big project and I and I'm really committed to it being completed by the end of this fiscal year. And so I'd like to know if council thinks that it might be beneficial if we actually added a meeting, one between the planning commission and council, to really you know, continue to go over this information, make sure you really understand the form based code and any of the other changes that have been proposed for this. Um, would you be willing to participate in the meeting? Do you think it would be beneficial? Absolutely. Or are you on top of everything and you got it? I, I indicated that the last meeting that I thought it would be good for us to really be good at interpreting it and enjoying it and agreeing with it and all the above. So I think I would, I would participate. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's mighty different than what we're accustomed to, that most of us know a lot of that in our head. Well, we got some learning to do again now. How long do you think? Sure. Like, so like a joint meeting of planning commission yes. city council? When? Or do you have an idea about that? I haven't even gone oh. beyond just coming up with, if that's something council feels would be beneficial, then I'll take the next step with Justin and Megan, estimate a cost, figure out the time, come up with some dates um, and, and have a presentation and then interactive session that helps everyone get on the same page with the changes. What we decided as far as public input goes, is there just a just a public hearing at some point? There is just at this point just a public hearing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on that subcommittee. I still feel like I, I'm sure I would learn something at that meeting. So I'd be happy to try to attend, um, to attend if requested to attend. I wonder if, I mean, all of our meetings are public, so, but I think that could potentially be a good way for the public to come to if it is going to be like this overview type thing outside of the public hearing. So that's my only additional thought is I'd be happy to come. Okay. How soon are you trying to do that, Michelle? And is that like the third month of March? Um, could be, could be, but probably more like April. If, if, it, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll throw out there, it, it would either be something I would suggest as a Saturday work session, because you dedicate a three hour block, or a, um, utilize the third Monday of the month. At this point, we haven't had a ZBA case, and it doesn't appear that a, a, an application is in you know soon to be submitted. So I'm 
pretty comfortable that that third um, that third Monday would, would work. It's the day after Easter. That's the only thing. The third Monday in April. Yes, which is April eighteenth. Right. And we're not off on the eighteenth. If that doesn't if that doesn't work, planning is on a Monday. And when they have their meeting, we don't have one, but that would indicate most of us would be available. I would think that might help you plan. We could do that too. It could be just a specific dedicated meeting. Yeah. yeah I don't think it would interfere with any any other cases. That's right, that. because that's, that's their night, yeah. And not ours. So I don't that won't be my preference, I think. <laughs> yeah. If okay. you're during the regular planning commission, yeah, and to, 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 just yeah. if it's the April, right. yeah, even if you haven't started an hour early, right? And that could definitely yeah, move it up <laughs> or half hour up, right? No, that would gain some time to do it. Okay, all right. Well, it, it sounds like the consensus of the board is to go ahead for that. Um, I'll make sure that they get a cost estimate. Like I said, this wasn't in the scope, so um, uh, I'll make sure we're aware of what those costs could be. <clears throat> that is that. Um, that's the end of my updates. <laughs> Couldn't think of the right word for it. So, um, unless there are any other questions, the rest of the meeting. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, we do have a sheriff report with Marcus tonight. Any comments on the sheriff report? I'm all good. Yeah, do we know what we're going to be seeing the new lieutenant? So, um, I, I just met our new sergeant uh, last week. Yeah. Um, and Apparently, there's still a lot of fluctuation going on there. Um, he's thinking that, that he may only be our sergeant for a year. Um, and again, Elmont is, is still our, our acting lieutenant for now. Um, but that may may change soon. Um, there's, I think they're still waiting for uh, the, other, the other lieutenant to kind of get his bearings um, coming back from active duty. Yeah. yeah, so I missed, I think the last time they came was in November when I was mm -hmm. nine. Um, and so I, I'm happy to, if I, it's appropriate to do so, I'm happy to talk to him on my own. I just have questions about enforcement. Yeah. So we can, we, so we, it's either we, we, something that can happen here or I, mean, I, I, I can reach out and see if, if they can, okay. I mean, just whoever, whoever it is. Yeah, just have somebody. Yeah, I'm just getting questions from residents and I would like to be able to do better. Any other comments on the sheriff report? Okay, you're down to city manager report, Justin. So, um, our new uh, associate planner, uh, Grace, is going to be starting on Monday. Um, she is going to be starting part time uh, while she finishes her master's degree. And then in April, she'll switch over to full time. Um, Coming out of our uh, Saturday work session, um, I know that we had kind of a list of topics that we didn't really have a chance to get to. Um, so I kind of wanted to get Council's feel on whether you'd like to schedule another Saturday work session to focus on on those topics that we didn't get a chance to do a little bit. We've talked a lot already right this meeting about um, additional work sessions. Um, but I uh, thought it might be appropriate to kind of cover those topics that we didn't get a chance to cover and try and work towards a finalized um, objective document. And if council would like that, I can I can work with Sean and we can pitch another couple of dates or a couple of potential dates. What are the topics that we didn't cover on? Weekend that people wanted to talk about. 
We're trying to cover the transfer property tonight to start yeah. the conversation. I don't have it in front of me. If there are things that you need feedback on for mm -hmm. the budget, then I I don't know if, if there's a way to put them in as discussion items and meetings beforehand. Um, I don't know that anything jumped out at me, out at me, but if you if you need an answer from us on something, I would like to be able to give you an answer. Okay. Let's work on as we get to that. Um, uh, I provided a supplement to your packet that included. Um, an update to uh, the organizational matters document that was included in the main packet. Uh, the only change is adding Mike Penn to the 3045 Broad Street um, Committee. Um, that's something that we that, that I missed um, as part of this update, but uh, it's something that had, we have already done. It's just a matter of having that reflected in, in that resolution. And then also uh, the updated survey based on council Saturday discussion. Um, we just finished it at like 4.30, so I don't expect that council will have had a chance to review it um, prior to this meeting, but uh, take a look at it. Um, let me know if you have any any feedback um, and we can, we can go from there. Um, so I think towards that, if everybody has this now, mm -hmm. And that's based upon the five of us that were here on, on Saturday. I think we did a pretty good job going through all the questions. It took some time, but all three hours on this. But everybody can look at this so that we could give, I'd like to know later in the next meeting, give them the lesson to get put out there. I can, I can also send out a, a draft survey. We can open up a, or I can open up a link also to it online. online. To, and then actually actively take it. Let's do that. Okay. He's going to send out a draft of what this looks like online, so okay. we can go and see it. See if there's some functionality or something that doesn't make sense. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, never mind. Meeting today, four thirty-five fifteen, with uh, Axiom. Uh, partners in architecture, staff, um, DAFE, um, and we covered quite a bit of topics. Um, we submitted the um, uh, building department application, uh, but they are quite a bit behind, so it may take a few weeks for that uh, to be approved. Um, and I know Axiom is kind of jumping at the bit uh, to get ready to move forward on this project. So the contract has been signed? Um, contract has not yet been signed. Okay. Um, but I'm working with Scott Manzel to have that the draft contract reviewed. Okay, good. Um, but uh, with how far out the building department is, I think that gives us enough enough time to, to really spend some time with the contract and make sure it's, it's, it's in good shape. Um, and then I have uh, my shoulder surgery scheduled for a week from today. Um, I'm anticipating probably 48 hours of fully out of, out of commission, um, and then hopefully back to being able to you know respond to emails and, and calls. Um, but the rest of staff is is scheduled to be in next week, so we will have uh, appropriate coverage. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, I do have a question. Sure. I don't know if this on the um, organizational matters list. I I know I don't know that Donna and I are like officially we're not council representatives on the art selection committee, are we? No, I think I think you are planning. I think I think Donna is. I guess I'm just wondering should art selection committee be on this list or is there a reason why it's not on this list? We kind of a deal. Wonder. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to say that I need it on there, or I just something that struck me when I read the list. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's not a bad idea, and I, and I that is something that, that I wanted to look at coming up is um, the the term lengths for our selection our selection places. Right now, I think it's one year, um, whereas all of our other boarding committees are three years. 
and it always feels like it comes up comes at a really it basically it's right before their their annual meeting is when the appointments come up um so i think it might make sense to, to switch that to that i don't need to find that in the, in the arts culture and urban plan I, I believe it was in the in the original yeah. resolution, the resolution and then in, in the arts culture committee plan as well yeah I mean, it's not, it's not a huge deal, but just one of those kind of cleanup items. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, all that's all I got for you, unless I have any questions. Any questions Okay. Um, I, uh, Having lunch with the mayor from Saline tomorrow. Mayor Saline, Brian Ma, mm -hmm. is going to come down to Dexter and join us for a bunch of Aubrey's. Just to catch up and talk about various things. So don't chase me down. Um, yeah, chase me down. Spend, I'm just going to So the bees will be around. I'll uh, we'll meet them at noon. So you know, Brian, please stop. You know, we'll stop by and say hello. That just need him to reach out and he agreed to come here. So, that's um, <laughs> um, The main thing I wanted to touch on uh, a couple of things we're, we're, we're zeroing in on March 21st for our public review of the fire chief. Fire chief candidate, I should say. Um, get that meeting set in February. So, um, during it on March 21st, it's the third Monday in March. So uh, you'll, you'll be seeing that posted soon. Um, I want to get into the discussion of the properties along Broad Street, away from Park, the side of the street that's away from the Park. Well, could we back up just a sure, minute? Sure, Okay. Um, what was your impression of the plan, the Westchester County plan for the roundabout? The roundabout. Um, we saw one version of it. Uh, I thought that it looked good. They had provisions for um, sidewalk connectivity across um, Main Street as well as across Dexter Chelsea. Mm -hmm. They did not try to run the sidewalk up to the bridge, you know, to the, mm -hmm. um, to the full tunnel. Okay. Uh, which you know makes sense when I try to people walk there. Right. Anyway. Um, they had some property issues that they were going to reconcile between the plan they had and with the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen a revised plan of that yet, but it looks good. Um, good. Basically, you know, a couple eggs to come around, but they, they used it to kind of illustrate where they thought the driveway, the best location for the driveway should be for the property, given the future of the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the roundabout is a, is a 2026 timeline. Okay. Okay, which you know seems far away from 2022, but there's a lot of planning, there's right away, there's permits. Um, so I, I think they're gonna get started at the road commission on some of that pretty quickly to try and get ahead of that and be ready. Um, that's the discussion that showed a little bit of preliminary water main. Uh, where it would logically go or could go if we were to extend water to that side of the creek. And um, so at some point in time, I think we need to have that discussion. It doesn't have to be today, but I'm looking at Dan. Uh, I am too. And, you know, my, I don't uh, know any things. Well, I mean, the, the applicant's going to come in and ask if they can use the well, which we previously approved for prior similar to use of that property. But I think you know if, if, if we're thinking ahead towards a larger project, that's really the time to think about what we do. Any utility upgrades that would make sense to go through that intersection or through there. Um, Wait, that would give us time to time to plan for it wise and, and location wise. And, Which opens up that corridor for development. Well, it could it could if somebody wanted to. Yeah, you know, that and that's the discussion. So if you know if if, if you want if we don't want to open that corridor up. You know, but we don't have to do it. But I, I think I think we want to give the road commission some idea of whether that's something that's important to us or not. They did make the point, I think, in the meeting that they don't want to make it part of the same project. 
Um, didn't they say one exactly? What they, said? One. they misunderstood what I was trying to do. I just want to look at two or three different options so we have options going forward. If we think that one of those options that's talking to OHM, we could just lay a piece of pipe on it, you know, to get water to Oak Creek or get it you know, going up there from Chelsea. That's all I was. Let, 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 let piece of like without connecting connecting it to the system without connecting it to anything. So if we ever did want to put a fire hydrant on the new location side, we already got that pipe underneath. The boat. And then look at two or three different options besides OHM's first you know shot and what they thought it would look like. We kind of got it set up for a certain way. We kind of planned that 10, 10, 15 years ago, and I don't know if that's the best option now. If we want to do this, but but the idea is that if if we do. Want to cross Mill Creek with our our water main, then we don't have to dig up the roundabout to then put addition to lay pipe. We can just connect to what's there. Thank you. Just one is so there's going to be a, you're going to see that concept as soon as it's refreshed, um, and then um, yeah, then, then we can get into whether we want to participate with some of our own improvements or whatever. If it would give this council and staff a chance to plan for it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just real quick, what what traffic? How is that going to change traffic flow? Or is there a problem? I understand there's a backups, but so what would the roundabout do to remedy? Is it helping people want to turn left from Baxter Chelsea Road to go under the bridge? Well, it would make all the movements slower and safer. You know, now when, when somebody comes down, when somebody comes down Baxter Chelsea Road and they want to turn right to come into town, it's not. So much about it because it's waiting or somebody lets them in. But right. the, the turn of the left to go under the viaduct is uh, there's some people who take a chance. It's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tricky because so of the backups going Because of the backups both ways. Now, um, that, as not from the words of Zach's mom, Zach always reminds us that when, when tra traffic is problem, there's very little chance of a severe accident. Right? Nobody's right. going fast enough. Right. But during the times when it's when it's not congested, even you're still sometimes you can't see the car coming through the viaduct. And people but sometimes they're slow coming out of there. So, so this would yeah, yeah. yeah just just make everybody go on kind of pattern. You, you know, you can see in the mornings down at Baker and Danhoy and, and such. You know, there's still congestion there right. at the time. It, it doesn't alleviate it, but it does allow people to move slowly at least get through. So. It's been a while since I've had my transportation planning courses, but the, the quick version is you're a winner if you're coming off from Dexter Chelsea mm -hmm. and you probably don't want to live in Westridge with this new thing there. It's, it's going to add time when I say that because um, where you, the legs of a traffic circle are very delicate. If you block off a leg, then that will block the whole thing off. So people wanting to turn left can't because there's someone trying to go through who's navigating the stuff there. So um, I'm happy that I don't have to do the, go through that spot after this is there. So that, I think it's going to help with the situation. Right? I'm not trying to get ahead here. So um, we have a good chance of getting funding as a group. Uh, they're going to designate that as their project for that year for the county. So it's, it's, you know, if they do that, that's that's what happened with Bigger Field. We were lucky enough to get that lined up the last time, and that tried to work from perception and information as quickly as you can see a project go. Um, it wasn't on the books. So that's what we're trying to do is put this one on the books. Yeah, the, the, the CMAX funding, which is what's being used, is not something that we regularly get access to unless it's like a joint project with the county. There's basically enough money in the county to do one traffic circle here somewhere in the county. Uh, does that answer your question on the right? Yes. yes. I just was we'll get that concept in the package as soon as we have that in the just kind of wondering how you know again, how quickly it's moving. It was it was nice of them to show it to us before showing it to the applicant. So that was good. We have to use all the phones for the time so and oh. we should see the we should be showing at that point the new design with the boundary correction. Good. That was all. 
how much you're going to send out. That's great. All right, so let me let me shift to 3045 Broad Street area, um, specifically the, uh, the gravel parking lot. It used to be 8077, 8087 Broad. Those two properties were demolished. And, um, between the, the cost of the property and the demolition of the two structures, it was about 164,000, I think it is, is that what's in here? That was funded by the city and then paid back by the DBA. So the DBA is interested in, in getting that property transferred into their name. And in the workshop packet for Saturday, there was some language that was proposed. Okay? And because it's the city's property, we would have to ask for voter approval to transfer of course. Um, or finish the transaction. So that there's a proposed language here that the DDA has discussed and is considering recommending for us to consider, so to speak. But, but and I just want to read it. What's been drafted is, shall the city council be authorized to transfer the following properties, which encompass 0.45 acres, which city council purchased on behalf of the Dexter Downtown Development Authority and for which the Dexter Downtown Development Authority has reimbursed the city for all costs associated with that purchase. So again, it's basically asking to complete the transaction. So that that type of language, um, they 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 crafted enough to, to have a conversation here. I said I would make sure we talked about it. Does anybody object to that type of question going on? Valid or, or 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 do we? I assume we want to continue with the transaction, right? I would think. I, mean, I personally do. Yeah. Aren't they thinking when they would sell or develop it, they would those parcels would all be developed together? Would be like added on to the existing thirty forty five broad, or would they ever be separately sold and developed from on their part? I think they're thinking that um, that they can offer it to be part of the other. And right right now, with, with us, if any other user, well, the DDA doesn't have to put the question of the sale in front of the voters. So if they had it in their hands as an entity, when a developer came before them, they could conduct business with that developer without the encumbrance, if you will, of the vote. So that that's one that's one set of property that's everybody knows what I mean by that gravel park area. Mm -hmm. Is it this, this, or both of these? It's it's just the existing gravel park lot from, from broad to the hour. Okay. okay. The other the other side of it, Jamie, mm -hmm. over down by um Heratic Hales, that property is owned by the city. It was bought back in 2002, I think. Um, yeah, bought through a foreclosure for a little over $15,000. That still sits in our name. Um, we've incurred an additional 13800 it says here, in demolition expenses. And um, the DDA is asking what our intention is for that property. Whether we want to put, you know, again, sell it. Um, or do we want to use it for establishing a parking in the area for example, for example mm -hmm. you know, like near the grand street right away the road? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to decide on it today. It's not an action item, but they're looking for feedback on that. When you when you ask about do does anybody object to putting that on there? I don't think I object the concern to me would be. Or it's going to take an active um, effort to explain that to people because people are not going to understand that any better than when they voted the first time. Agreed. Well, so there's a lot of questions and a lot of mystery out there, and a lot of people really are questioning what was the intent of that. Well, the, so Donna, this is where this gets, you know, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg. With some of this, right? Okay, um, you know, the, what, what I know is that the, you know, the intention of has been for 10 years 
that we bought it because they didn't have the money. Right. We were trying to be opportunistic. The city currently has one hundred sixty-four thousand dollars that came from the DDA. Yep. You know, I think it's incumbent upon us to explain that whole story, but we're the one that takes the action to put on the ballot. And then I it's guess just, then we're going to be responsible for informing the public. We will be responsible for informing yeah. the okay. public and, and, and making sure that this language doesn't have to be exactly like this, but right. something like this tells enough of the story. I got you. Um, and as Paul always says, you know. Don't just give me an address. Tell me what what, what was it commonly called or known as. Or it was, I it, so people don't wonder where eighty seven is. There's no structure there. It's very you know, there's no address there now. It's, it's a former address. So, um, if you could be thinking about that, I'd like to. Or I don't. Do you have a, Does anybody have any thoughts on that? We do have one more council meeting before the DBA meets again. I'd like to be able to report back to the DBA. Okay. What's that special tale? Yeah. Something that comes to mind is I, I we didn't get to on Saturday and we haven't talked about it yet. I have proposed a potential question to put on the community survey about sales of public property. And it doesn't look like it got in this draft, which is fine, but I don't know if we're trying to get feedback. I'd be interested in getting more public input on any potential modification to that language in the charter. And I think this survey could be an opportunity to do that. And perhaps the response could help inform future action in the same, they seem related to me. Yeah, I don't know if anybody is interested yeah. in a survey question on that general topic to get additional public input before we would go directly to- Well, I, I mean, I mean, this, this question is something that could go, I mean, if we think, is August going to be the, the soonest election? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could put that on the August election and find out how much confusion there is. Then, but, but I mean, I, mean I, th th this, I think this story could be told pretty easily, frankly. Um, but again, that's why we discussed this. Group. Yeah, I mean, I think there are some members of the public who legitimately want any sale of public real property, for sure, to go to a public vote. So I don't know if those residents, upon finding out that the DPA is not subject to that, would then think we're making an effort just to shift all of the property to the DDA so that the final sale of the property wouldn't need to go to a public vote. That's one potential. They may think that as far as if there's a perception out there. They also might think that there was a you know a plan and was completed the plan. Yeah, I think certainly in this, yeah, in that first case, I think there's a compelling argument there. Do yeah, I, I don't know that the, I don't know that the other side is something that necessarily has to go to the DDA. You know, I I went by there this weekend. Again. That parking lot was packed. There, there, there isn't enough completed parking over there. And that that lot is going to gravel also. It's just you know from being gravel, it's always going to change gravel. It's going to gravel. It store snow there. Sometimes if it's more there, forget the need to do it. Um, Grand Street right away is, is not you know, even either. I mean, we, we, we talk about ADA. Priority. Okay. And there, there is a, there is a stipulation, I think, in the deed that the when we acquired it through foreclosure, there's a stipulation that um, says that if we try to sell it for market value, if there's any. Anything we get above that goes to the county. If, if sure. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think we need to call and make sure we understand that for because it, 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 the, the inference is that there's unpaid taxes that were not settled, and that if we made money on it, we don't pay the back taxes. That's kind of the inference. But I'd be interested to know how much that actually is. What, how much, if, and if there are actually, I talked to a former council member who was around when this was done, and uh, so 
Joe Thurl was, was the one I talked to, and he thought that he remembered that the price that we agreed to pay covered the back taxes. Now, but, but I don't know if that's, you know, 15,000 is, is a, would be, would be a lot of taxes, mm -hmm. you know, on a property like that, but back 20 years ago. Right, that's, that, um, so I think we I think we should contact the county treasurer is what I'm getting at and, and, and actually find out what that means and if there is something that would be attached to a sale, you know, let's say we took fifty thousand instead of twenty eight or something. Well, I think mean, this is a good question you can ask me because if I'm not mistaken, if taxes don't get collected, um, they still have to be paid by the community. Um, I, I know we have, um, if there's capture through the DBA and the county doesn't get the taxes in the end by payment, that money has to go back from the DBA. That also has to be the same to the city. You may have already paid the taxes. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's any liability or not. I just know that you brought up that the deed had this condition in it, right. but I don't know what the ramifications of the yeah. condition are until we talk to the treasurer. So if, if somebody, if you or Marie or somebody can. Oh, that's going to ask. Did Jesse, do you want to unmute Marie? Yeah, she should be able to. Uh, again, I don't need the answer today. I'm just saying. But maybe, maybe Marie has, um, has a, some insight on it. Some of what you were saying was breaking up pretty badly, but if I understand the question, it's whether or not there are currently back taxes owed, because there could, there can't be on these. It's been too long. And if that's not the question, please tell me what it was. The question is, if we sell it, do we have to pay any money in the county? No, we should not. So let's verify that by calling the county, because of the, just because of what's in the deed. Well, is, but this is property that we purchased the, the like 15 years ago? Yes. Yeah, there wouldn't be any taxes due and owing because they would have foreclosed by now. Unless, oh wait, are you talking about the ones that were foreclosed upon? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I heard that part of the conversation too. Um, there should not be, but I can double check. Okay, thank you. So I, I, I think that with that property and its proximity to the Grand Street right away and the trail right, and such, I think we should think about what we intend to do or if it fits into something we want to control. Maybe we don't even need to worry about selling it, we're just need to transform it into a better use. Again, I don't know where that lies in the priority of things, but um, that's my opinion on that. Does that cover the topic well enough to give you guys a chance to think about it? I'd like to at least by March 14th have some guidance I can offer back to the DDA that we need to work on. We'll put this question out there or, or no, we don't want to, or we're giving back 4000 or whatever. That's what would not be my preference. Just know what we haven't talked about is if somebody actively interested in that piece of property and this will all come about. Or is it just once again just you all the steps in the Um so we did meet with I guess that's on my, my um is that on here? Hold on, sorry. When did we meet with common sale? Last, Last Wednesday, right? Yeah. Oh no, I didn't have that I guess I'm gonna finish this before that. You did, right? So, so you know, we, we being the DDA in this case, we advertised all of those properties. What's between the park and broad and then the two that we just talked about. Three minutes that we just talked about. We advertised all of that as an opportunity, as a redevelopment opportunity to the general community. And we've got no interest at all from through the formal process. Since that's concluded, there's been a group that's come and asked for some information. Zach and I and Mike Ben and Michelle, and Josh met with that group here last Wednesday. And you know, we just shared the history of the project, the property, and talked about all these different things, including the, the necessary vote, the you know, what we do with DCD, the encumbrances of the power lines. Just gave me history in general history. So I probably don't know if they're this is a common sale group. Common sale is the name. And what are they? 
They're in real estate. Right, they're in real estate. Yeah, they, they, I, they, they said, that's if I heard them right, they have 6,000 employees. So they're, they're bigger than our community. Their primary vehicle is old folks' homes. Yes. Yeah. Old folks' homes. This is living facilities. But they, yeah. they weren't sure. They, they weren't sure what they were proposing. They, they just said that they were used to dealing with, you know, dwelling in some uh, developments that serve, serve people. So we invited them if they're interested, you know, to, or have continued interest to. You know, let us know that and, and what manner. As we said, we would reconvene the 30 45 bar from the teacher at least for another year. They were, they were on more receive, we were sharing information. Any other comments or questions about that at this point? Are there any council member reports? Oh, yeah, you can. Sure. Sure, you can. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I thought something. Michelle and I had a meeting this afternoon uh, with a couple of um, extra high school students. Okay. And um, they have asked for our help in applying for a um, river cleanup grant through the Huron River Watershed Council. Um, it, would, it would be a small grant, like $500 um, that they're looking for. Um, but um, Basically, they, they require a community partner in order to apply for the grant. We'd be taking on the fiduciary responsibility, um, and they would take on the responsibility of uh, organizing and um, getting the in-kind match donations from local businesses. Thumbnail of their project? Hmm? Thumbnail of their project? Correct, yeah. What is their project? Uh, so um, it would be, uh, th th initially they talked about uh, looking at uh, Hudson Mills, Okay. Um, but during our meeting, we started directing them more towards maybe Mill Creek or um, mm -hmm. uh, near Central Street mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, their, their goal ultimately is to create a uh, annual cleanup day um, where they where they get you know high school volunteers and maybe they, they select one area, <coughs> one area that you know a different area next year. Um, but the grant would go towards like purchasing supplies, like waiters and, um, you know, things that, that they would need every year to, to be able to, to do the work. Thank you. Maybe they could get all the logs that are built up along the, <laughs> the border, border trail out of the way. I, 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 well, I, we, we, I'm all up here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, we're, we're working to, to put them in touch with, they were already in touch with uh, Ann Arbor, Arbor Proud Limited, but we also want to put in touch with um, uh, Chris Jones, who has been heading up and, and working with AATU to, to do some of that river cleanup by like many, like pulling the tires out and cutting the logs and that sort of stuff. I have a metal detector they can use. Mm. And don't forget Joanne Wagner. Yes, jo 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 Joanne Wagner is, uh, has been huge in that as well. Um, so we, we, we just want to know. Yeah. And she has agreed to have the girls in the Yeah. So we just want to let my council know that um, we're looking to partner with, with mm -hmm. uh, those students to, to pursue that grant. It, it's due on Monday, and the students have some work that they still have to do. Um, and they're going to let us know by the end of this week if they've been able to, to do everything that they need to do for us to apply. Do you, do you need a motion of any sort type or support or are you okay with it? I, I, I don't think so. I think it's are okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any other questions for me at this time? Okay. Down, assuming there's no council member reports, I can pay seven or go to the consent agenda. I move to approve the three items listed on the consent agenda bills of payroll in the amount of $216,616.66, the emergency repair services by TLS Construction for the Hudson Street Water Main Rate, and the fifth and, fifth and alley traffic control order resolution. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Okay. Both. Very good. 
Okay. We call the vote to approve the consent agenda, please. Covered? Yes. Arab? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Michelle? Abstain. Keel? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We have no unfinished business under item L. So we have two items of new business. Number one is the consideration of the organizational management solution. And the updated resolution was passed out in front of you. Is there anyone going to be the alternate for the last policy? Generally, the third Wednesday, it potentially means the third Wednesday of the month at 9.30. Is it in person or virtual? Um, they have been virtual. I think they're starting to go back in person. They have been virtual. And we, we, we can approach them again. What time? What time is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 We can approach them again and plead to allow some of our staff to. What's the date of that? So, I might have, I'm, I'm referring to somebody earlier. Third monthly, the third Wednesday of the month. And, and you get parking validated. <laughs> Did you ask them about a staff alternate or are you waiting to see if their, their their policy is not to have well there's their their preferences to have preference with each of the elected or appointed. Okay, well, right now we don't have a name. So let's I'd like to approve the rest of the organization of the changes that Justin has here. Uh, is there a motion to do so? Um, to approve the organizational matters. Thank you. Second. All right, so for now, we're just not going to stop it. Yeah. Um, Ashley, please call the vote to approve the resolution. Michelle's? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Arab? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Keel? Yes. Thank you, everyone. New business item M2 is consideration of the design and engineering proposal for the Grandview Commons <coughs> connector. The mobile account advisors for an amount not to exceed 19000 So we're moved by Zach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a somewhat of a continuation of our phase two trail project that we wrapped up um, during our when Robert came in with Grandview. Uh, we negotiated an easement that would allow us uh, trail access out to Grand Street. Um, the idea being that they would construct the piece on their property and then we would construct the rest of the top of the property to, to finish the connection to the trail. Um, Barbara has indicated that they're getting ready to start construction of phase three, which is the, the last phase of Grandview Commons. Um, they're estimating that they'll be complete with their phase um, sometime in fall of 2023 or spring of 2024. Um, which means that we would want to get started on our, our piece um, pretty quickly. Um, so we solicited uh, proposals for um, the design of this piece and uh, OHM uh, submitted a proposal. Um, and Patrick, I don't know if you want to provide any information. Sure. Um, so as Justin mentioned, it's really a continuation. This was actually, I think, part of the design uh, or in the early stage of when the uh, phase two of the Elfrey's trail was being developed. Um, but if, if you go back to that, there was, uh, there was a, a bit of a disparity between the construction costs and the available budget. So that was one of the things that was removed. 
Um, but what this will basically just be is a 200 foot long section of boardwalk. Um, it's almost entirely over wetlands. So one of the things that we have to do as part of that is to get an updated wetlands assessment. I think the original assessment was done uh, in 2016, but those are only valid for a few years. So uh, we don't anticipate anything uh, change, but we just have to get that updated based on the delineation. Um, and then really going forward from that point, it's, it's really a, uh, because it's all blue out, it'll just be basically the same type of section you see up there. We're actually going to go a little bit narrower because this is not better laid. Uh, we can take it down a 10 foot wide boardwalk and set it in this particular location. And the adjoining um, sidewalk on the brow property uh, for Canyon Commons is going to be 10 foot wide. So it'll be contiguous, a continuous 10 foot wide. And uh, Patrick had, had the suggestion, and it's something that you know, maybe we, we look into as when it does come time to move forward with you know, looking at firms for construction. Um, LJ did uh, phase one or uh, phase two, um, and they, they were the low bidder. Um, with them having, having done the phase two work, it may make sense to, to try and solicit a uh, proposal from them to, to do this phase as well. We work with LJ construction uh, almost exclusively in these type of boardwalk applications. Uh, they're very, very depth in it. Um, they've done a number of sections of the Northern Border Trail, and I think there's a trail out uh, near uh, Chelsea they built as well, uh, as well as portions of the zebra pathway to the seed sile. Um, so we always find they're pretty, pretty good to work with. And because this is such a small section, um, it might be worth that conversation. And but, but but for us they, they were the low bidder through through the state that letting process. Well let's get the design going. This is this is for the design phase, right? Correct. So let's get the design on threats and then we're ready to get to that stuff and we'll talk more about that path. Zach? Um it's been a little while since we're back in the budget year here. Was this nineteen thousand nine hundred included in the budget? Uh it was not, but we did have one hundred thousand set aside for the Mill Creek. Uh, our playground. Okay. And that is unlikely to uh, be constructed this year. So there, that there is some room in the parks but hope okay. yes. Yeah. Well, can I ask for that to be like rolled over? We can ask for that to be in like a reserve. A lot of parks going to say, hey, so we had all that. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's one of the things that we might want to discuss as we get into the budget. So the design of this all predates me. So something that came up on parks, it seemed like there was maybe some recollection that when phase two was designed, maybe this was the, I don't know what the original, this was maybe the original, but then it didn't happen. So then in the meantime, we put in the connection that went up to Baker by the athletic fields. And so then I think it, there seemed to be, just correct me if I'm wrong, we did not take a vote on this, but it seemed like there were some people saying, well, why did we need this interim connection point since we already have this asphalt? Then it also sounded like, well, this is something we basically have an agreement with and we can't not do. Um, so I don't know if anybody can speak to any of those things. So we, we had and had a Mill Creek Park master plan. Mm -hmm. And the initial scope of that is, was to take the trail all the way down to Shield Road um, and connect into the the, the um, track sidewalk there that leads out to Shield Road. Um, as we were looking at costs for um, phase two, understanding that you know likely we in a three phase scenario, um, one option was to um, go all, you know where we went. The other option was if we if we didn't even have enough money to do that, to scale it back and cut in at Grand Street um, across the the Broward Cross property. Um, we we I, I want to say we were in the middle of getting cost estimates for those sections, and we weren't sure whether or not we were going to get the grant funding we wanted. Um, and so we basically put in that piece as a contingency in the event that we didn't have the funds to get out to Baker Road the way we did. But we also, when we when we asked Brower to, when well, 
Broward approached us with a PUD. Part of the public benefit for that property was the construction of, or the partial construction of the pathway to connect to it. Mm -hmm. He agreed to do the portion that's on this property, not out of the wetlands, so for that last 200 feet or whatever, he said, okay. But at the time to plan for that, we knew that that's not going to come until the third phase. And, you know, we're still, still probably doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, to your question about the, the rolling over, uh, you know, we, we put together a general fund budget using the tax dollars from this year, you know, the what are it, 28 million, probably, I'm mm -hmm. guessing, but. 100,000 of the current year's tax dollars was going towards that. Whatever doesn't get used, we go into reserves. Next year, assuming it's still a priority, we just trade the lines out of the cross. It's not really rolling it over here. I mean, from whatever doesn't get used in the current fiscal year technically flows into like the savings account. You know. So, and then we can assign the so the, 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 the way the way parks was, was trying to contemplate it was basically uh, the, the designate creating a designated fund balance line for Milky Park. So uh, 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 uh and then contributing to it for future years as well. Why? Because we think it's more than a hundred thousand? Potentially. We'll talk about that, I guess, if that's the priority. But I mean, that, that isn't what we've done for. I don't know if we haven't done that before. That doesn't mean we can't do it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the 100,000 was. Well, that, that whole thing, from my perspective, needs a lot better definition because I thought we were putting out there a number based upon an estimate, you know, to upgrade the playground equipment. And that has ballooned into a much bigger evaluation of what are we going to do with that whole area. And I, that's, from my perspective, a little bit out of control. It had ballooned to that before we considered it on council, but it's, I can understand if you didn't have an understanding of that. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't mind having a discussion. I'm, I'm just saying that if, if we, we have our budget has to catch up to that that vision, if there's more than what was originally part of our thought, it's just my thought. So it's not bad either way if that's what we want to do. We can prioritize anything. And that's what we should talk about. That's part of what we should talk about when we get into the budget. But I just want to make the point that it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, don't really roll it over. Because in this case, what, what Zach's question is leading to is that the city manager is proposing instead of spending 100000 on that, which is not going to happen right yeah. now in July 1, yeah. we have it and it's going to reallocate. That's proposing we reallocate that within the overall spending. So they'll create a line item for this and they'll reduce the 100000 by 19 or 20 or whatever. Just to make so they can count for it. Okay, I just want you to be yeah. careful. No, yeah. Okay, so we have a motion by Michelle, second by Griffin to support the proposal. Um, any yeah. further comment? Actually, if we call a vote, please, to approve the motion. Griffin? Yes. Cousins? Yes. Hurrah? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Shells? Yes. Teal? Yes. Carries? And we're now down to points of balance. Aaron, I'll start with you, Stephen. You got them on the Okay. Mr. Shells? Um, I was going to start by saying I'm sorry to get to join everyone on Saturday, but it's like three hours of Smith in the survey. I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> my puppy dog decided it was time for him to go to the vet, so I got to do that instead. Um, <laughs> Friday morning at noonish, uh, I'm also going to be participating in the Michigan Municipal League Economic Development and Land Use Legislative Committee meeting. 
uh, which is the MML has these different legislative committee meetings that get together when there's legislation pending in Lansing. I'm not sure what our agenda is, but if there's anything interesting, I'll share it so you guys can share it with me so we can help them shape the legislation that comes out. Uh, let's see. Again, I as I'm driving into town looking at the bridges, they look really sad, and I want to again introduce the idea that we ought to work with the high school students uh, in the mural classes to get some murals painted on those blank spaces on there. And I'm sorry if I missed it, but if, if, if I didn't and we don't have it, again, I'd like to know whether or not we're required to provide space for the constabulary as part of our contract or if we aren't. Um, that's a million dollar question. That's it, thank you. So now, okay, Ms. Fisher? I think I'm fine. Well, I'm also good. Okay. Yeah, no, come on. Okay. Uh, we're down to not our participation. Speak this evening. Come on, Jen, give us a thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I will seek a motion for adjournment, please. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, tomorrow is lunch. Tomorrow is lunch.